welcome to this week's video um, in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this little Tasmanian Tiger Commission um, it's a smaller one from the previous one that I made um, and yeah I'll go through how I made it so if you want to know how I did it then just keep watching Right, so I'm starting off casting my parts for this Tasmanian Tiger Commission and I have a casting tutorial in my shop at creaturesofnut.com and if you want to know how to mold as well, I have a basic molding tutorial available there as well. So I'm using some uh, easy cast resin from Barnes uh, and it sets in about five minutes or so. You've got about a five minute working time uh, or two minute working time depending on temperature. Uh, obviously when it's warmer you have less time to work with it but uh, first test cast came out pretty good um, and then I ended up doing another cast with some glass eyes inside of the head. I do have that tutorial available in my shop as well if you want to know how I cast the glass eyes inside of the resin head. So once that is all done I can then move on to the painting. So I usually prime any areas that I am going to paint first with a uh, primer. I generally use a um, canvas primer. It works really well for what I'm using it for. It works really well on resin um, is what I'm saying. And uh, once that's dry I can move on to painting all the parts that need to be painted. So as this is a Tasmanian Tiger I'm just going off some reference pictures from um, Google. Uh, I'm painting all of the areas that need to be black including the nose, the mouth and the eyes. Um, so I'll paint them up using a, a water-based acrylic paint. Um, I'm using uh, the brand Chromacryl, but you don't have to use that brand, you can use anything that you find in your local craft store or basically online at the moment. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy paint either um, and you don't have to be too particular about where you're painting because uh, we're going to be covering it with fur anyway so I uh, don't need to be too pedantic about it. So same deal with the feet, so these are some new feet that I have sculpted as well um, and they're a good size so I can use them for a universal um, as a universal foot, uh, which pretty happy about. Um, so painting it up again using that uh, same paint uh, from Chromacryl and also priming it beforehand. Uh, again, don't have to be too uh, careful where you paint because I usually end up covering it anyway. Moving on to the fur, so I'm going to be doing a new pattern of uh, body for this um, particular doll. So I have a video of um, on my Patreon. Uh, it's also available in my shop now, uh, just about body tips and what I do to make bodies. Well, one way that I do to make bodies. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, it's available on my Patreon where you get access to um, all my videos or you can buy a one-off video in my shop at creaturesofnet.com. So I'm just marking out all of the areas that I'm going to be cutting. Uh, and all of the body patterns obviously is what I'm going to be cutting. Uh, so I'm just cutting out a big section first and then I can um, concentrate on cut cutting it out um, over on my other side of the desk. So just a quick look at the fur as well. Uh, you can get a better idea of the colouring and the, the pile. Um, so this little piece here is going to be the tail. Because the tail is so small I'll have to end up um, hand sewing everything uh, for that one but the body I'm going to be sewing up on a sewing machine and then finishing it off with a ladder stitch with hand sewing uh, but yeah because the tail's small I'm gonna have to hand sew it anyway so cutting out the patterns using a small pair of sharp scissors uh, I like to use small scissors because uh, it's uh, easier to feed it in between the pile and uh, the backing of the fur you don't want to cut the pile because it ends up cutting all of the texture off and all of the the tips of the pile and and it's a little bit hard to work with so uh, always good to find something that works for you you can use a bigger set of scissors or a knife or a Stanley knife or something like that but I prefer to use a small pair of scissors uh, it's way easier to control so once everything's cut out I can then pin it fur side together uh, pinning it this way because I'm going to be sewing it up on the sewing machine uh, the other way I have a couple of videos on my patreon if you want to see another way that I make bodies as well um, which I'm sort of refining over time uh, but yeah it takes a lot longer to do it the other way um, but sometimes um, it works out better and I can achieve a better body uh, shape using that other method so I've just got a small uh, container of glass head pins um, 
It doesn't have to be glass head pins, it can be any pins that you want, but just make sure you take them out before you run the sewing machine over it because I've done that and I've uh, broken a needle doing that and bent the pins, so uh, just make sure you know where your pins are before you end up sewing. So this is what it looks like once I've sewn it all up. You can see I've left the, uh, the legs open, obviously the front end of the neck and the back end as well I've left open so I can turn it the right way around. So sometimes this can be a bit of a struggle, but if you leave a, a big enough gap, you can uh, easily pull it through um, and push it through. Uh, and then, but leaving a bigger gap means more hand sewing, but um, less damage to the pile. So yeah, you'll, you'll work it out when you've done it a couple of times and uh, see what works for you. You might not even like doing it this way, but you know, I like this way a lot more. <laughs> uh, so this is what we have once I've pulled it through. You can see it's starting to take a shape of what it's going to look like um, and of course it'll need a trim uh, once everything's put together. So for this one I am using a ball and socket armature. It's significantly smaller than the last one that I made. Um, so I'm going to be using a smaller ball and socket armature for this one and uh, it's going to be all ball and socket armature, uh, not a combination of the wire and ball and socket. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm. I like using the ball and socket armature, it moves really well, um, but not everything is applicable for using that type of armature. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I'm just putting all of the pieces together. I will do a video on the armature soon. I'm waiting for um, all this nonsense to calm down uh, before I add anything into my shop regarding the armature pieces. I've got heaps um, and I've got everything ready. I'm just uh, waiting for this all to calm down so everyone has a fair chance at getting um, some armature stuff. Uh, anyway, moving on to gluing. So I'm using a tacky fabric glue and I use this glue for pretty much everything uh, that I stick to resin uh, and fabric. It works really, really well. Uh, and I just get it from the local store here in uh, Australia called Spotlight. Um, you can find something in your local store as well. Very similar. It's just a clear tacky fabric glue nothing special but works really well so once that's dry uh, I usually leave it overnight to adhere properly to the neck I can then start sewing everything up you and I use this ladder stitch to uh, close everything uh, so working on the legs to start off with the front legs and uh, you want to get yourself a good quality thread as well because uh, sometimes if you have a cheap quality thread it ends up snapping and you don't want that <laughs> it's very frustrating um, but I use a Gutemann thread and I find that's probably the best thread that I've used so far so once it's all sewn up I can go back to that tacky fabric glue and start actually gluing all of the sewn up edges to the resin uh, and I just uh, use a decent amount you'll find how much you need when you do it a couple of times uh, you don't want to oversaturate it with the glue because sometimes it can go through to the other side of the fabric and it makes the pile be a bit weird and um, stiff so you just want a, a nice even amount uh, enough to stick it to the resin so this is what it looks like all sewn up and all glued together. Uh, give it a little bit of a trim and add some fur to the face and then it starts taking shape of a Tasmanian tiger. So I'm adding the fur to the face at the moment. Uh, once that's dry I can give the face a bit of a trim as well. Um, and I've already given the body a trim uh, just because I wanted to uh, just see what it looks like underneath. Sometimes you, you, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Sometimes you can do it beforehand after once you've furred, anytime, there's no right or wrong way. So that's what it looks like when all the fur's been applied and we are waiting for everything to dry to trim it. So it looks a bit scraggy at the moment, but once you trim it, it ends up uh, taking shape and unveiling the animal underneath. So once that's trimmed, I give the eyes and the face a little bit of a clean up as well, just to make sure uh, everything is um, refined and it looks like an animal again uh, and I give it a little bit of a top up of the paint as well so just refining the eye area the nose area and also the mouth area and adding any little details like shading or markings or anything that you want to add to the face as well for this Tasmanian tiger obviously the tiger has stripes on the back of um, the back of it the rump area I guess so um, once I've finished uh, doing all of this eye area, I can move on to doing the patterns on the back. So I'm using a 
Uh, just a black fabric paint uh, by the brand Jacquard. Uh, I really like Jacquard paints, they're really high quality. So if you can get your hands on anything that is by Jacquard, I highly recommend it. They do dyes and all sorts of things like that. So I use their stuff basically primarily um, for any fabric dye that I want to do or paints or anything like that. I find them very, very good quality. So I'm just uh, blocking in all of the striped areas using a um, just a brush this time. You can use a um, an airbrush, but for this one, I wanted to get a little bit more refined, and I didn't want the hair or the fur to fly around everywhere with the pressure of the air brush. So I decided to go with a regular old manual airbrush, and that way I'm able to um, control the pile a little bit better as well. So. Um, I can make the stripes a little bit more even uh, and then when that's drying um, you just want to give it a quick brush out to make sure all of the stuff doesn't stick together so that is the basic process of making this Tasmanian tiger I have an albino version coming up very very soon I'm working on it very slowly um, but anyway yeah thanks to my patrons for supporting me I really appreciate it if you want to find my patreon you can see it in the description box uh, you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creatures of net and I'll catch you in the next one bye